Now that I've owned my Pintax K70 for about 8 months, I figure it's time to give it a proper review. The K70 is one of the newer APS-C releases from Pintax coming to market in 2016. It was preceded by the K3 Mark II in 2015 and followed by the KP in 2017. Now with the confirmation that Pintax will finally be releasing a new APS-C flagship in the near future, how does the K70 hold up in 2019? Pintax really gets how to make a camera that feels great in the hand. While the K70 is a relatively small DSLR, the grip feels large enough to provide a great purchase on the camera. It's easy to hold and shoot with for long periods of time without fatigue. The camera also feels substantial and well built without being overly heavy. The buttons and dials are in logical and easy to reach places, and I really like the placement of the front dial. It sits near the shutter button and feels very natural to manipulate. The camera features three user-defined presets on the mode wheel along with the usual modes familiar to most camera users. Pintax also includes a TAV mode on their cameras, which basically amounts to manual mode with auto ISO. This makes getting auto ISO set up a breeze. Speaking of ISO, that is the one thing I do think could be improved about the controls on the K70. The default setup for changing ISO is to push the top button of the D-pad and select the value that you want. That's all well and good unless you want to use the D-pad to change your AAF points, and in that case, if you set your D-pad to change the AAF points, you have to switch to live view or video mode to make the ISO button function as an ISO button again. I'm also glad that Pinsax decided to put a flippy screen on the K70. Even though I'm not often vlogging while carrying the camera around, I do find the fully articulating screens to be super useful. They make composing from any angle so much easier than screens that only flip up or down, especially when shooting low-angle portrait orientation shots. And while we're talking about composing, the viewfinder on the K70 is crisp, clear, and bright. The fact that Pintax includes a prism finder even on their entry price cameras goes a long way to show that they care about the user experience. When it comes to the Pintax as a system, there's a lot to like as well. As I mentioned in my K1 review, the lenses are a big draw to Pintax for me. There are tons of lenses with awesome character available in K-mount. From the vintage Tacumar line to the modern limited lenses, Pintax lenses certainly have some magic to them. As a side benefit to the image characteristics they provide, they're also relatively affordable. Shooting them is made pretty easy with Pintax's awesome focus peaking and live view as well. These benefits are a huge plus to me as I have a limited budget and I love vintage lenses. When it comes to image quality, Pentax certainly delivers there. Even without using the pixel shift mode, the 24 megapixel sensor performs admirably. Pentax RAW files are extremely easy to edit. They provide great color right out of the camera and don't take much time to deliver the final product. There's plenty of dynamic range to work with and the files are extremely flexible when it comes to boosting shadows or exposure. I've used the K70 as my second body to shoot a wedding, I've used it a ton to shoot landscapes, and while I'm not a great street photographer, I have shot a lot of cityscapes and street-like scenes on the K70 as well. It's never disappointed me on image quality. When paired with its pixel shift mode, it's extremely capable. Even using my old Pentax 80-320 film era lens, I'm able to get incredible detail with the K70. It truly is quite impressive. Not only that, but for still shooting, the IBIS in this camera is extremely good. When it comes to video on the K70, it is still a Pentax. While they have made the K70 a better performer in the video area, it's still not the primary focus of the camera. The K70 features phase detect autofocus on the sensor, making it the first Pentax camera capable of continuous autofocus during video. But while it is outdated compared to modern mirrorless cameras, it does work. There's sometimes a little hunting, but overall it seems to be pretty accurate and mostly confident. The K70 has a few options for color profiles, but I always find myself using the flat profile for video. If you turn the contrast and saturation down a tick or two, it's actually a pretty gradable file for what it is. The K70 only offers 1080p resolution at 24 and 30 frames per second. 
Like the K1, the K70 also disables IBIS for video, opting instead to use digital image stabilization. Overall, I've been impressed by my K70. It delivers great ergonomics, excellent image quality, and serviceable enough video for YouTube production. If you're looking to get the most bang for your buck out of a small APS-C camera, it's hard to ignore the K70.